This was the first time that I've ever ordered a garden that came in a wrapper. Moisture is excluded from the package. Most gardens just come with a cardboard container around them. In addition to the external care that they provided, there's also bubble wrap. And another surprise was that the box inside has a carrying handle, which makes it very simple to carry around to wherever you want to put your garden. Inside the box, uh, the foam is protective of the inside garden. This is one of the most sophisticated ones that I've seen in terms of electronics. There is a user manual, nutrient mixing guide, a brochure that shows several of their other products, port group. There are several different ways of getting a hold of the company. Letpot has Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest and YouTube, the light hood lowers to an amazingly close distance to the deck. With 36 watts, this is squarely in the middle of, say for example, uh, what you might be familiar with, an Aero Garden Basic at 30 watts or an Aero Garden Bounty that is at 40 watts. Just a little bit under 18 and a half inches from the top of the deck to the bottom of the grow light, which offers quite a lot of space. Now, the deck on it has 21 grow sites. There's a lot of people who like to use these to start plants for their vegetable gardens outdoors, as well as start plants, grow them out in that type of close spacing. Fortunately, parts are universal. This is a cover that I have from an arrow garden, and it fits perfectly. The seed baskets that Let Pot sent, this is the one from Let Pot. This is the one from AeroGuard. Of the grow sponges that Let Pot sent to me, they are a, a little bit denser than what I'm used to, but that is from Let Pot and that is from AeroGarden. The AeroGarden is deeper on its sponge. It's more of a peat material type, but you should be able to use either one interchangeably, which will give you lots of options, as well as the ability to use a lot of the commercially available seed pod kits that come with a seed, a sponge, and a basket that can just be dropped into this particular garden. The grow bowl is massive. As a matter of fact, it is 1.98 gallons. That is the largest grow bowl that I have seen so far among all the gardens that I have in my inventory. The Let Pot LPH Max has a great set of features. Now when it arrives and you look inside, you might be a little stressed out about uh, all the parts but it's very simple to put together. The unit has a circulation pump and there is a box that is molded into the bottom that this goes into. There is a sponge and there's a slot for this sponge. And so you'll want to slide the sponge in, locate the uh, cover. Now the cover has got cone on it. My pump when it came, the pump nozzle was not in it, but there is a short end and a long end. You want to put the short end into the pump, press it in firmly. And this cover has a sponge on it also to help filter out debris. But you'll want to align the pump so that the upward part of the pump jets up through this distribution cone. Then on the back side of the of the pump open area where water's pulled in and you want to turn that towards that uh, piece of foam that we just put in a second or two ago. So let's go ahead and put this in. The top piece, once you have it aligned, will actually snap down on the unit and there's tabs on the left and the right. This uh, foam piece we could pull up and out and that's what it's going to look like, you know, once you get it done. Now, the water pump, as I mentioned, is here. This box on the other side contains a second pump. And in automatic mode, you put your plant food in here. And as the uh, plants require additional food, this will automatically dose by pumping out of this tube into the container. So you can go for a long time with the system automatically taking care of feeding the plants. There's a third pump that is located over on this side. And this is the one that is uh, also uh, even better than the uh, automatic feeding because uh, this pump over here pumps up and out of that tube. 
And what it does is, if you look on the back, here's the power supply and that just pushed into the back. If you tilt your unit up like this, you can see better. And just as a general rule of thumb, never uh, have this plugged in when the unit's dry because you could burn up the pump. You wanna make sure there's always water inside of this unit. This clear tubing goes down into the back here behind a little collar and then you just have to work it on to like the little barb and you put the soft end of the tube onto that. And the other end of the tube has got a metal attachment. Now, the thing about this is is this particular pump, this third one, allows you to automatically top off your garden unit. You will want to make sure that whatever you choose for a reservoir is lower than the unit. I don't have a uh, reservoir selected yet, but I do have a bucket just for demonstration purposes. So if you were to have this bucket sitting on the same surface, it's higher. So once it starts to pump the top off, it would create a siphon and, and it would overfill your garden unit. So that's why you wanna have it below and then you just drop that. The uh, metal nozzle helps to hold it down on the bottom so the tubing doesn't float up and out. But there's a float valve that is in the front of the unit and when that drops down, it automatically triggers the pump over here to pull water up into the garden and stop when the uh, garden is at its maximum level and shut off. Once that water level comes up, that pump kicks on and it puts just the right amount of food into the garden unit. There is a part A and a part B. They come in bottles like this. Two bottles, A and B, they have little granular fertilizer pellets in them. And what they suggest is to take 100 milliliters of water and add to each of those. This is a measuring cup I picked up from a local store in the kitchen section. It has milliliters on it. So I'm going to add water to each of these. I'm gonna shake those up after I put the cap on and I'm gonna let those little tiny pellets dissolve in. Now that's gonna give me 100 milliliters in each of these two containers. In this food container in the garden, I'm gonna flip it up and then I'm gonna pour equal amounts of part A and part B into that and that's going to provide me with the nutrients to top off and keep feeding the plants. The water that you initially put into here, you could put 25 milliliters of A, 25 milliliters of B to start out with, and you don't have to use all 21 sites if you don't want to. It doesn't come with the garden, but they're very cheap buy online. Just get some covers and you could just stick those covers in the garden like so. That way you could space your plants plants out a little bit better, you know, if you're growing larger plants. That helps to prevent the LED light from shining through the open holes and creating algae inside of the garden unit. It's a well thought out design. Uh, another uh, tip would be that on this telescoping uh, light pole that's on the back, always try to push down on the pole itself versus pushing down and possibly breaking the unit if you were to push from the front. You've seen the basic features of this garden. The next step for me is to conduct a grow demonstrating the app. You'll get to see how well this particular unit does for me.